Welcome back to the channel, guys. A question I get all the time, how to use breadboards? How do they work? Today, we'll take a quick look. On the bench here, I've got a bunch of examples of how I use breadboards. Almost all of my Arduino projects end up starting here. It's the easiest place to start. It's so simple and easy to whip up a circuit and test it out. Let's take a look. This is my RC nav light system I whipped together a little while ago. What we have is an Arduino Nano, some resistors for the current limiting, and LEDs. This is the bare bones of any circuit. This is kind of a silly way to set it up, but it's easier for you guys to see on camera. The Arduino splits the rails here and we run the outputs to each of the individual LEDs through the load dropping resistors, splitting the sides and operating them. No problem, we have a common negative on this side. It's really, really basic. Let's take a look at the board. So when it comes to the breadboard itself, there's not much to it. This split in the middle here separates both sides independent of each other. We can jumper them across with the normal jumper wires. Along the sides we have a bus for positive and negative, but we can use them for whatever we want. These are joined longitudinally across the entire length of the board. The vertical pins are joined together all the way across one row at a time, separate from each other. So this row is entirely common. This row is entirely common, but they're not common to anything else unless we run a jumper in there. Back to a live example, this OLED display, you can see each of these pins is actually on this vertical row, but they're isolated from each other. And then I've used just jumpers to take them across to the Arduino pins. These are all vertically common as well, so you can plug in in any of these ports that you desire as well, more than one in a port, such as in the case of the supply or the grounds. For a common example here, I've used this negative labeled bus to use for all the common pins of my LEDs. That way it's a little easier, a little cleaner. You don't have to do it that way, but it's up to you how you lay out your circuits. One important thing to remember, if you have a microcontroller, you can't have all the pins on one side. You can't go this way. You have to use one of these bridged gaps to keep the pins isolated from each other. And you can place this anywhere on the board that you desire. In this case, this is a big prototyping one from Adafruit. It's really handy for large circuits. Works like a champ. I really love these little boards for working with these Arduino Nanos, far better than working with the Arduino Unos because I, you have to run jumpers anyway and I'd much rather have them in a breadboard where they're secure. And then if I need to take this design and move it over to a proto board, it's really, really easy because it's a one-to-one -one change. You can just take it out of here and move it right into a perf board. I did a video a little while ago how you can buy these things cheap on eBay. I buy them several at a time. Uh, they're only several cents a piece when you buy them in bulk. You can't have too many of these in your collection. I hate breaking down circuits. I would rather leave them uh, together. Like in this case, I have the OLED display for all my OLED uh, work when I'm testing out a new circuit, but I also have a Nokia 5110 set up. I never break these down. I always leave them set up and that way I can rapidly prototype anything and test out the code. I hope this helps someone. Good luck in all your electronics ventures. I'll see you next week.